Hey guys, welcome back to Hot of Matter Plus. We have with us our guest. It's somebody who I absolutely love so very much. She's a dear friend of mine as well. And a friend of the house. We have TV presenter, amongst <laughs> many other things that I will, I will read off. <laughs> Bolanle Lukani. Hi, how are you guys doing? <laughs> hey. Thank you for having me. And thank you for coming. providing tea. <laughs> we take care of our guests. I That's really appreciate like, it. <laughs> I think I send it in my writers. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Bolanle, you do a lot of different things. You just like to act like you don't, but you do a lot of different <laughs> things. So, Bonale has been an actor. I keep, anyway, let me just say has been. Because <laughs> she, she, she likes to form, just, but it's probably fine. probably will be. Like, I know, will be. Does, that gives you the right thing. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Definitely. But what was your experience with acting that made you like? Um, yeah, so you guys have both worked in production. You're an actor and you're a producer and um, you know what it's like. It's, it was really, really hard. I think I, my passion is presenting. I love it. I can be on set for hours, 16, 17 hours. I've done overnight shoots multiple times, and I'm fine with it. But when you're not so passionate about something, I think it takes a lot more effort. And then also, if I didn't have a specific objective or goal um, from a specific scene, movie, production, I just didn't feel like it's worth my time. Right. So I'm very like intentional about everything I do. So, you know, I did Sugar, which was an amazing thing, and that was one of my major goals. Mm -hmm. um, I did Isoke, and that was a goal for me as well, to see if I was even interested in it. So I, I think I've checked those two boxes, and I'm kind of like, okay, thanks, <laughs> next. Um, but it was also just the long hours, like the long the hours, but not even that, the waiting around on set and doing mm -hmm. nothing. I, I didn't understand how I could be on set for like 12 hours and not do anything. So <laughs> I like, my life is running. <laughs> what is going on? Um, and if you're passionate about it, you can deal with it, but I'm not. So I, I'm just like, let's just cut it. I think I've only had that experience right. once because normally as producer, I'm the one who everyone mm. is complaining to. Yes. Mm. So okay. I'm like, come on, hang around. Yeah. You're waiting for something. But this one time I was waiting Literally, it was the, the shoot was supposed to start at four, and it wasn't even acting. It was like a show like this, okay. just like a, not even a proper show, just like getting cameras and talking. <laughs> and we're there from like, well, I got there at six, so I was yeah. late. And we started shooting at like 9.30. Mm. I, was, I was going That's crazy. Okay. And that was the first time, I apologize to you, <laughs> as an actor, that was the first time I understood what it's like when you're not in control of anything. So you don't know where, you don't know why, right. you don't know what. All you know is that... We're just waiting. It's yeah, a waiting game. Yeah. 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 So that yeah. was, that's kind of why. I can understand that. I can understand that. <laughs> but um, you've done so well in both of them. But Thank also, you. the other thing that many people might not know, although I feel like everybody should know by now, mm -hmm. is that you have this amazing documentary yeah. called God's Wives. And I'm not going to get emotional, but <laughs> I found, for me, um, personally, it it struck such a strong chord with me because my mom's a widow. Mm -hmm. So to see that mm -hmm. and to see you sort of like put them in the forefront and champion their cause, I thought it was just Thank you. Thank you. And it's really strange. People always ask me why I don't have any close relatives or family members that are widows. But I do think that um, I remember it was December 2016. I was kind of just asking myself, what am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm. And, you know, people would be like, oh, what does that mean? But like, you're on TV, you know, I, and I just won the Future Award. Funny, funny enough, like two yeah. days before. And I was sitting in my bedroom like, what am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm. And I think it was one of those moments where God was like, yeah, babe, I'm going to let you see what it feels like to win and succeed. But if you don't have impact, it means nothing. Because mm -hmm. I didn't understand why I felt that. Um, but then later, I started to ask myself, like, how can I use my platform, my influence? Even if I don't have platform or influence, like, how can I use my life to affect or influence anyone else? Um, and we live in a country where we have a lot of challenges. You know, before we started shooting, we are talking about how we feel like we live in a first world country. But the truth is that we live in a developing country. Um, and generally, actually, if you look at it statistically, Nigeria is considered a functional failed state. Um, in so many ways. We're functioning, but a lot of the parts of our country are not functioning. And we're just going along with it because it's a coping mechanism. And there's only so much we can do as the people. But I always tell myself that we don't have any social services. We don't have a social welfare system. So I realize that it's important that we be the social welfare system for people. Um, you know, I'm young, I have disposable income, and um, that's really what inspired me to start working with the widows, you know. So I, on the talk show I host moments, we'd had someone from a widow center come and she told us about the challenges they were going through. And I was just like, 
okay, like, what can I do? And in December, that December, a few days after our conversation, you know, we had a Christmas party, very small. We gave them rice, you know, oil, just things to make them smile. And they were dancing and singing like I bought them a house. And I was just like, just a bag of rice and Maggie, like, you know, or bouillon cube, what, what it can do for someone. But it, it went beyond that because... What I loved is that um, Chinyere Anyoku, who runs the center, she was like, I don't want to just always give them rice. Mm -hmm. They have to have value and feel like, something. you know, there's something more. Um, and she started, she asked me to help her start the center. So we did that. And the center now can say that we're able to empower women so that they don't feel dependent on us all the time. Um, so I'm really, really excited that that happened because it kind of gave me perspective. Mm -hmm. Like I was beginning to kind of like sink into a hole of just like self-absorbedness. And I was like, yeah, I don't think God, God wasn't going to allow me to stay there, um, which is good. So, yeah. <laughs> so interesting because um, we, we try to use this platform to talk about impact that young people can have in practical ways. Yeah. And a lot of conversations we have are people saying things like, well, the government is supposed to, and the government is supposed yeah. to. And I feel like what you've just brought up is this, this new perspective that you can create, because we are, we are the government in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so if we haven't started to st do things practically to help people, how are you suddenly going to yeah. understand how to take care of people? And it's that hard for people. And also but what you said about having success and winning awards, yeah. but then not feeling like you have purpose. Yeah. Can you talk a bit more about that? Because I know that people keep asking about purpose, but yeah. clearly purpose is not to win an award. Yeah, it's, it's it's bigger. It's a I, I think it's interesting because, um, you know, when I, the Future Awards is one of like the biggest awards specifically for someone in my position that I could have won, you know, and I remember I even prayed and fasted for it because I was like, God, this award must come to me and God is good. He gave it to me. But I always say that purpose is, it's, it's just like a daily experience. Um, I've never been a big, like people will say, but what do you want to do in 15 years? I have some ideas, but I also know that what I'm doing now, I didn't think I'd be doing it seven years ago. Mm -hmm. So I understand that like it's an evolving thing. So what happens when you don't have a seven year plan? Are you gonna say you're purposeless? No, I don't think that's possible. I think it's a daily experience. So for me, you know, a lot of my purpose comes down to finding a way to emulate the love of Christ in my daily walk. And it, it seems shallow, it seems very basic, but it's the only way I can function so that I can have a bigger picture of what God wants me to do. I don't think God, um, sometimes God, God is really good. And some people have like a bigger picture in 15 years and they know exactly what they want to do. But I also think that God really wants to see us be faithful with like the really little things. Um, so if anyone is struggling and you're like, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know where God wants me to do. You have to ask yourself like, in today, did you do God's will at all? Mm. Why would he give you a full page of what he wants you to do for 10 years when in one day you can't even do what he wants? Like, it's just a, mm. it's just a growing experience. Um, I think it's kind of how, like, you have a relationship with a boy or a girl, and you say to yourself, you know, in the first day of your relationship, you, you guys are just joking, you're playing around. It's not until time has developed where you begin to reveal deeper things about yourself. In the same way, God, I don't think, we'll, we'll, God wants to reveal deeper things about you, but he wants to see that you're ready for it. Um, so I really do believe that purpose comes when we're faithful in little things, in like a daily experience. And then you understand that like, oh yeah, this is how, you know, I can do the X, Y, and Z and really impact the world. And impacting the world is literally changing one person's life. I always say that. It sounds shallow, but it is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Huh. I love that. <laughs> but going back now mm -hmm. to awards, mm -hmm. <laughs> she's so sweet to you because she doesn't Let's, let's not act this in there and for it. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're good and they, you know, they encourage they're you and they make you know that yeah. you know, you're on the right path. So, Definitely. The MVCA. Yeah. It's kind of like, I'm still like, whoa, <laughs> how? Um, it's so interesting because, okay, so... I created this documentary. I've always, funny enough, to, I have, I'm a very intentional person, so, so it doesn't sound as if I'm just like going with the flow. No, mm -hmm. I am extremely intentional. Mm -hmm. And I plan my life very, very detailed. But at the same time, I allow room for God to give me wisdom to say no. Right. So there are a lot of no's, and I walk away from a lot of things. Um, and I remember two years or three years ago, I actually sat on Rubbing Minds with Ibuka, and I told him I wanted to produce a documentary. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I wanted to do something serious within the production world. So, um, you know, I just didn't find the story. So it took me three years to find a proper story. 
And I realized that because I've been working with the women at the center, um, I could tell their story about what it meant to be a widow in Nigeria. You know, so that's how God's Wives came about. And the name was literally biblical, uh, where the scripture says he's a husband to the, he's the, husband to the husbandless. So it's, that's what it's just a play on words. And, um, you know, I produced the documentary. It was really hard. I had to shoot it twice because <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. The first cut, I showed it to my sister, and she goes, absolutely not. <laughs> my sister is the most honest person, and I love her for that. She goes, I don't care what you have to do. Do not release that thing. You know, and I, I, I had friends who borrowed me cameras and cameramen. Shout out to all the cameramen who dealt with me. <laughs> um, and, you know, I directed it and wrote it and produced it and everything. And I sat down with the editor, and my editor was amazing. I paid him so little, and he edited and edited and edited <laughs> that thing for me. Thank you so much, Otega. Um, you know, but... Yeah, it's just really weird. I don't know what it feels like. I'm like, I'm an NBC nominee. I don't know what that means. Yeah, what that is. <laughs> you know, but I do have to say that sometimes it shows you how, like, I just realized that when I focus on other people, like, good things will come back. Mm. That, for me, was just, like, the learning experience. Like, Bonali, the less self-absorbed you are, the more the light inside of you will shine. Mm. Um, so that's been really cool. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm really excited. I don't know. If, I don't think I'll. Win. I don't know if I'll win, but it's a win already. It's a thing. Yeah, that's what it is. Because the NBCAs are usually, you know, more about the actors. So to yeah. see that get nominated, and you know what I'm saying, yeah. and you've also acted exactly. as well. So it's like, of everything I've done, it's yeah. this one that's strong impact get nominated. Exactly. It's a great thing. It's Thank a really you guys so much. Okay. I'm gonna be so nervous that day. Gosh, <laughs> oh, I don't know if I'm gonna go. No, you have to go. I know. You have to go. Yeah, but thank um, you. Okay, so let's, let's kind of go. So um, in last week's episode, we kind of tried to do this joke, which we kind of chickened out on in the end. <laughs> We're going to put a whole video of you in Russia singing, We're now. Oh home. my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm. Mm -hmm. I. <laughs> My voice. No, it was the excitement. It was the. And there was some parts where she just started looking around like, oh, I don't know what's going on. I'm already committed to it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, but with the whole World Cup thing, and you know, our, our hearts are broken, even yes. though we have a secret weapon. Yes. France? The Nigerian yes. in France is our exactly. representative. What's his name? Oh. That's just a joke. His name is Mba. It's actually M-B-A-P-P-E. So we've decided on this show that we're going to call him Mbakbe. Oh, that's nice, nice, nice. That, that's, and he actually does have a Yoruba name. Like, okay. he, there's, there's a legit connection. We did not fabricate okay. it. So we're, we're kind of excited about that. You know, so we can back France. We <laughs> are backing France. I said if England wins, we will not hear the end of it. And what with Macron coming? I know. We're just yeah. like, it's like we're brothers. We're, we're, we're peeps. I feel like Macron so did that purposely. Like, you guys, oh yeah, come now. Rev France up. Yeah. I know, I know. Perfectly timed. Yeah, Perfectly. but then what was it like in Russia? So it was an amazing, the World Cup experience. It was one of my, it's my bucket list in life to go to a World Cup. So I was really mm. excited. Part of like the whole intentional thing. So I really had been working hard to make sure that I went for this year's one. And I'm okay. really pleased that I was able to go. Um, I went there to create content. So, you know, my goal was to do crazy things like that. Like seeing <laughs> Winnow. Um, but amazing. It's like the one time the world just comes together and says, it's okay, we're all kindred mm. spirits. I mean, Everywhere I went, people took pictures with me. I think because I'm the first black person they've ever seen. Um, that was really weird. I felt like an artifact. So that was really cool. The day against Argentina, we were at a restaurant, myself, Kimi, and Banki, and um, you know, they were singing. When we walked in, it was like they cued it. They started singing their song. Argentina, eh, da, 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 whatever, whatever in Spanish. And, you know, but it was cool. We took pictures together. They asked me for pictures. I obliged. Um, but it was an amazing experience. I think everyone has to go. If you're not into football, you should go. Yes. It's just like this vibe of energy and um, excitement and hope. You know, mm -hmm. in a weird way where you forget everything that's bothering you and you just put all your emotions into this one game. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. It was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Well, I was going to talk about something real quick. Okay. Um, I know that you've done a presenting master masterclass yeah. for um, your up for upcoming, upcoming presenters. presenters, and I thought that was really brilliant because it's great to always give back to people who um, are looking up to you. But what are you going to do with that? Is there any follow up? So what we're going to do is so that class was such an intensive one. It was we were there for like thirteen hours. Um, you know, it was like a crash course and it was one on one. So like everyone would do mm. present and I would like break it down and say, no, look like this, look like that. Um, so what I'm planning on doing is doing like a three hour workshop. Um, and this would be like up to like maybe two to three hundred people because um, that workshop was very close. It was just 10 people. Mm. And that workshop is just to give them an idea of what it means to be a presenter before they're even interested in actually going into the presenting mass masterclass. I think a lot of people want to be presenters because they think it's glamorous and fun. Um, and that's not what it is. I mean, yeah. it's cool to take pictures and look nice, yeah. but that's like 1% of the whole experience. Right. So you have to ask yourself, like, why do you want to do it? You know, um, you know, it's just like how everyone wants to be an actor. You know, mm -hmm. everyone now wants to produce a film. Yeah. Like, do you know what it means? You know, mm -hmm. as a producer, it means that you're literally on the floor yeah. slaving it with, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. And being an actor, you're on set for like 15 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So I want to give people an understanding of what it means to actually do it. And then um, we'll go from there. And but I mean, the first class was I was so impressed. I was impressed. And it shows because people who are serious will commit to something like that. Right. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's so interesting. I remember I had a stint as a presenter once, like a stint, like while I was in uni. Wait, what are you doing now? Just like all, all this stuff. But no, not, not this kind of presenting. <laughs> stuff, I mean. No, like literally like the, you know, holding a mic and running after people and saying, and I was just like, okay, like I saw this on TV at, thought this was cool, but after a while, I'm just like, why are you here? Like, I'm much, I'm like, even sitting here feels a little weird to me. Okay. But it's not, it's not so bad. Yeah. But it's, it's completely different when you're a producer. Because when you're a producer, you're just like, hey, go sit down there now. Like, <laughs> can't do it now. But yeah. then it's like, you're the one doing it. Um, it's also something that I saw that popped up on Instagram. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, on IGTV. I just saw this flash of a video where you oh, said yeah. you were going to talk about... I know, celibacy. celibacy. So mm. my video hasn't come out. Yeah. I've been... So I'm, I'm literally like now sobered, come back to Nigeria. I've been traveling a lot, but mm. I do have like a... I think I've released the first trailer like three months ago. Mm. Um, so I have like a YouTube channel, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I released one video and it's just really like on how to live as a Christian in like this day and age. Um, so I wanted to talk about celibacy. The video was out Wednesday, so you can go to my IGTV or YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And it's just talking about my own experience and choosing celibacy mm -hmm. um, in relationships. It's hard, it's possibly archaic <laughs> and not popular, but I think it's one of the most beautiful things that I decided to do for myself. Yes. So yeah. <laughs> Say a little, a little more. So, you, you know, I think what it is is that I've always said... Or, like, how did you choose How did it? I choose it? Yeah. Um, definitely had relationships with people, and I did not enjoy any of the sexual intimacy that was experienced in those relationships. I think mm. they were very... Um, I don't think that they were beneficial to my mental health, being, spiritual health, my emotional health. Mm. Some people, people are different. I'm a very emotional person. So when I like you, I like you. Mm. I became very attached to these people for no reason. Um, so I decided that it wasn't healthy for me. So I left it alone. And yeah, I've done pretty well. You know, it's been, a, it's been years, <laughs> I can say that. And I've been able to do that by putting restrictions, not restrictions, by guarding my mind. Mm. Um, so I do things as... Intense is like I don't watch movies with sex scenes. Mm. Um, so these like little things where you're like, people are like Bonali, are you 12? And I'm like, no, I'm trying to not have sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. That's right. all, my nigga. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, but it's been such so good because my spiritual senses are really heightened. Mm. So I feel like when you have sex in relationships, it really dims your spiritual senses and your connection to the Holy Spirit. Mm. And also. But you guys should go watch the rest of my YouTube video. Because <laughs> there's another reason why I think it's really important. Mm. Okay. So, yeah. We'll keep that one on Thanks for bringing that up on my side. Oh, I really like it. I'm glad we had enough time to yeah. cover it. But then now we have run out of time. And I finished my tea, so it is time for me. Just perfect. Just perfect time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. I had an amazing time. Okay. I smiled throughout the interview, which is a good thing. I avoid mm. interview.
I'm gonna sound like a diva. <laughs> I avoid, I enjoy interviewing people. I don't enjoy being interviewed. Uh, but you like this one. This was good, this was fun. Oh, cool. Yeah, okay. thank you guys. We're so happy you came. Thank, thank you. you so much.